Welcome back to the Papa Meat Channel. How you doing? How you doing? Today we have something very, very interesting. You know, I've been doing uh, this podcast with me and Windagoon. If you didn't know, it's called Creepcast. You can find it on all the platforms here. I don't know. This is what it looks like. Maybe go check it out. But since I've been doing that, I've been getting more invested into cryptids and all kinds of weird monsters. But today I just wanted to settle it once and for all. What is the best cryptid in my opinion all right because let me tell you last tournament we did which the video got <laughs> demonetized to high hell was the worst food tournament and yes people were upset chicken feet meatballs <laughs> won over asian boy piss eggs i stay awake at night thinking about my decision but today hopefully our minds align and we can have a nice cryptid tournament and we can all decide once and for all which one of these is the best cryptid in our categories here we have the wampus cat fresno night crawlers Ninjin, the mysterious cryptid of Antarctica, <laughs> the Flatwoods monster, Mokli Mimbi, Mimimbi, the Jersey Devil, Champ, I like that, the Mongolian Death Worm, Nessie, Wolp, Wolpertinger, Mothman, Skunk Ape, the Yatevo, the Chupacabra, Bigfoot, and the Windigo. That is our nice lineup of people. It is time. Round one begins now. The Wumpus Cat and the Fresno Nightcrawlers. I have never heard of any of these, if I'm being completely honest. But luckily, we have a nice little document here. We're going to try to digest where these came from, you know, try to give a little bit of information. So where exactly did the Wumpus Cat come from? The gist of it is that it's a big cat and it's magical. That's kind of the ins and out of the Wumpus Cat. There's a similarity to the Cherokee myth about a female onlooker who witnessed a scare, a sacred ritual by hiding under a wild cat pelt. The woman wasn't supposed to see the ritual, so she got cursed to be a cat. In the 1920s to 30s, the Wumpus Cats got blamed for killing livestock in North Carolina and Georgia. It can use magic. <laughs> it can use magic. And we don't know the variety of the magic, but just know it's magical. I don't know what kind of magic, but it can use magic. Extra legs allow it to fight with two while running with the other four. It's a strong swimmer and potentially a shapeshifter. It can run at you full speed and swipe at you and cast spells, I guess. You know what I don't like about it though? I don't like, I don't like that I don't know the magical ability stuff. Can they shapeshift or not? It's Because it, at the end of the day, it kind of just sounds like it's a, a six-legged mountain lion, you know? I mean, that is magic. I'm not saying it's not magical, I'm just saying. And it is facing the Fresno Night Crawlers. The Fresno Night Crawlers or the Fresno Aliens as I do, <laughs> this picture is just, <laughs> I don't know what I would do with this information. If I saw this, I'd be like, okay, just like two spooky guys just walking across the street, mostly. Originally sighted in 2014 by a man who was awoken by barking dogs on his security cameras, he saw strange creatures running across his front lawn. <laughs> he saw these guys like dancing around his front yard. Their appearance is extremely thin, white humanoid with no discernible arms. The cryptids appear to have very short, thin, stilt-like feet. Its powers is teleportation, Potential chloromancy, plant magic, intelligence, and muscular. Maybe they're powerful. We do have a little video here. Let me see. <laughs> you be the judge. I will. Oh, there they come. <laughs> walking around. They do look like a big pair of like bell-bottom jeans just walking around, don't they? It's kind of spooky. It's also kind of cute though, isn't it? Very nice. It was featured on a sci-fi show called Fact or Faked, and on the show it was deemed unexplainable. But some of the explanations were an alien or an extraterrestrial being, a new species, possibly a primate with short arms, no way. A mean, it's identified deer standing upright, no. Pants or a puppet on a wire, probably it. A balloon tied to some sort of cloth with two remote controls, toy cars, and the feet. Okay, we have video footage of the Fresno Nightcrawlers. We don't have any video footage. There might be some footage of the Wampus Cat out there, but mostly it looks like pictures. I also do like the mythology behind the Wampus Cat a lot. Woman kind of cursed, and then she was like turned into this kind of uh, horrid mountain lion creature. I'm gonna give it to the Wampus Cat. I like the Wampus Cat for that reason alone. Boom. Wampus Cat. Today's video is partnered with Gamersubs. Gamersubs has been a long-standing partner of the Papa Me channel. You know them, you love them. They got the amazing waifu cup shakers with some delicious elixir on the inside. The best thing about Gamersubs is that it's keto-friendly, zero sugar, and goddamn if it doesn't taste amazing. I mean, you got amazing flavors like bread risk, titty milk, you even got grandpa's ashes. You got them all. There's all kinds of flavors. And you know what's the best part? Is that they're all amazing. There's not one bad flavor to be had. And you can even try right now by going to Gamersubs.com and using promo code POPMEAT to get some free samples. Because you know what? If you get some free samples, I know you're going to be a returning customer. 
They all are. And the, even the best, best part, part, I know I've said best part seven or eight times now, but the best part about this is that they have caffeinated and non-caffeinated options. So it's like, if you don't want to get all wired up at night, you know, it's, it's a little late, but you do enjoy the taste, you have a nice non-caffeinated option as well. It's amazing. So be sure and check out gamersubs.com and use promo code POPME to get some free samples and just give it a try. If you don't like it, you think it's just whatever. It's on them. You know, I'm not paying for it. I'm, I'm certainly not paying for it. They are, okay? I just want to put that out there. So like I said, be sure to use promo code POPME me and check out with gamer subs and get yourself something free and test it out we know that you'll be a returning customer in no time take care everybody and thank you so much for gamer subs for partnering with us back to the video next one up nin nindigen the mysterious cryptid of antarctica which first off that picture is wonderful this is what i wanted the fresno nightcrawler to be if it's just gonna be legs and the flatwoods monster so what exactly is the ninjin the ninjin a cryptid first observed by two channel user in 2007 with supposed eyewitness report from a whale researcher who claimed to have seen the creature surface near their ship. The creature has two common description. One is whale-like creature with a human face. The other is a large head on humanoid legs that's more human size and wanders around on land. Both are described as being pale blue with large slit-like mouth. The eyes aren't consistently described and are either small or uh, large and gaping. We don't know what the fuck his powers are. He's just big and has long legs, basically. I like him. He's very simple. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Oh, he's just chilling. <laughs> you gonna move? He's not. Okay, there you go. I like that he's very cute. I like him. Which now we are going to the Flatwoods Monster. Is a creature sighted in September of 1952 in West Virginia after seeing a bright object cross the sky and land in a farmer's field. Three kids saw the light in the sky and went to a nearby house to tell them about it. Three kids were joined by two other kids and a National Guardsman then went to investigate the object. Upon reaching the point of impact, they saw a pulsing red light. When they shined a flashlight upon it, they saw what is now known as the Flatwoods Monster. He's 10 feet tall humanoid creature with red eyes and a head shape like a playing card spade. The body was a metallic armored structure lined with thick vertical pipes. There are some discrepancies on whether it has arms or not, which first off, what's what's up with this deal about creatures not having arms? Let's let's fucking let's bring the arms back. You know, come on now. There are people speculate that he has advanced technology because he's an alien and they have night vision, imposing stature. Big guy, 10 feet tall. The old creepy picture here is is fun. This is hard. The ninja is kind of cute, but he's kind of boring versus even just having glowing red eyes and falling to earth from a meteorite. It, I like that. It's kind of like a fun little mystique, but I, I'd probably, I'd give it to the Flatwoods monster here. Got to give it to the Flatwood monster. M Mokele Mim Mimbe and the Jersey Devil, which I have heard of the Jersey Devil before. The Mokele Mimbe, I'm not going to say that right. In the local language, the name means one who stops the flows of river. Originally described in 1913 from a German captain surveying German colonies in Africa, he was cautious with what he reported because of how unbelievable it was. Seen in the jungles of Central Africa countries, an animal with long neck, long tail, and tracks with three claws kept being reported. When asked about what a Macaulay, you know, Macaulay Culkin looked like, the local people of the region would draw the shape of a seropod dinosaur and a single tooth or horn, a single tooth. He has one giant buck tooth. Its size is somewhere between the size of a hippopotamus and an elephant, god damn. Can transform between spirit and physical form. Ooh, I like that. Megafauna size and strength, very territorial. Hmm, I'll be honest, the drawing here is not, <laughs> that does not help its case. Is there, I wish there was one picture of it that had its big buck tooth. The thought of a big buck tooth creature with claws being able to transform from physical to spiritual forms is very alluring to me. Especially imagine seeing his big, stupid fucking face with his buck tooth. I like that. Hmm. All right, Macaulay, you really got me there. But you're facing a pretty hard foe, which is the Jersey Devil. The origin of the Jersey Devil traces back to a woman named Deborah Leeds. She was the mistress of a British soldier and was suspected of being a witch. She probably was. She had immigrated from England to uh, the New Jersey Pine Barrens when she found out that she would give birth to her 13th child. 
She cursed it and said, Let it be the devil! The baby was born as a hairy creature that flew out the window. God damn! From there, it is said that the Jersey Devil started to terrorize the locals and took to eating children. This is, this, is, this is awesome. Napoleon's older brother, Joseph Bonaparte, is said to have a run-in with the Jersey Devil. Freshly exiled in America following Spain's defeat with England, one night Joseph Bonaparte was hunting, walking the grounds of his 800 lit... Yeah, fucking banished to 800 acres land. God damn, dude. Walking the grounds of his 800 acres land in border town, New Jersey, he came across some odd tracks. He explained them as as a two-footed donkey, where one foot was slightly bigger than the other. He followed the tracks and then abruptly vanished as it had just flown away. Then a strange hissing sound came. Turning, he was face to face with a large winged creature that he described having a horse-like head and bird-like legs. The creature hissed, him, hissed at him once more and flew away. In 1909, there was hundreds of newspapers published claims of encounters and people drew the conclusion that it was the same creature as the Leeds Devil and got called the Jersey Devil due to the public's location being national attention. Last reported sighting was 2009. Pretty recent. It's powers. I'm going to read this, and I want you to know that this is overpowered. The Jersey Devil is too powerful. It can breathe fire or poison water, all right? It can fly. It's extremely durable. So firearms up to and including a cannon had no effect. Someone shot it with a cannon, and it did nothing. And it has night vision. It's just so good. That is a great photo, too. So good. I love that. I mean, in this one, it's obvious. I mean, it's got to go to the Jersey Devil. It's just too good. Jersey Devil, especially the idea of it being like... A witch's 13th baby and she's just like you'll fuck this baby it's a devil pops out of her and just flies off you gotta go jersey devil one of the most famous crypt i mean it has for a reason all right so now it's champ versus mongolian death worm which the champ is an uh, american nessie an, an american loch ness monster more of a sea snake than a uh ple plesiosaur first recorded sighting in 1609 was from the lake's namesake the french uh cartographer samuel de champlain there have been 300 reported sightings of Champ. Its appearance is basically a giant sea snake that's somewhere between 20 feet and 187 feet long. That is a big gap. And thick as a barrel with a head like a horse. This is the video 1985 footage of Champ. All right? Okay. I don't know. I don't know about old champ. I'm not gonna lie. He's not really doing it for me. Mongolian death worm, which to be fair, the Mongolian death worm art here is much, much more sick, much more creepy. I would hate to be in this, you know, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I feel like I could slap this shit out of champ if I'm being honest. Mongolian death worm first came to Western attention from a paleontologist book in 1926, which was called On the Trail of Ancient Man, where he heard secondhand from people in the Gobi Desert about the creature, none of whom had seen it themselves, often confused with a local snake, the Tarta Sand Boa. Its alleged powers are the ability to spray venom or discharge electricity. Huh? Both of which use to kill at a distance. Do they? Also, it's so poisonous that if you touch it, you'll die. I will say, worms are just kind of creepy in general. Big worms. Especially you can't even touch it. So you could just be chilling and it could just be like, peekaboo, touch you on the side and you're dead. That sucks. In this one, I mean, it's off. I mean, the Mongolian death worm is going to win. What are you supposed to do with champ? Which next up, we have another one. Loch Ness monsters coming up. And Wolpertinger which we have the Loch Ness Monster, also known as Nessie, but I'm not gonna say that. This is beautiful art. The Loch Ness is a 22 square mile mountain lake in Scotland. It is home to old legends, speaking of water dragons and Kelpies living there. On August 22nd, 564 AD, St. Columba famously encountered a water demon in the River Ness in Scotland. Nessie's popularity resurged in 1933 with several firsthand accounts. However, the accounts were very similar to depictions in the original King Kong, released March of that year. <laughs> That's really funny. No, I swear. It's like, did you just watch King Kong? They're like, no, what? Come on. The Loch Ness Monster has been mostly described as having a large body with a long neck and tail and no limbs, just flippers. It's pretty cute. I mean, it's one of the most iconic cryptids out there with the most kind of controversies around it. A lot of people have taken pictures. I mean, the guy who originally took the famous picture of the Loch Ness Monster admitted later that it was fake, even though he still believes in the Loch Ness Monster. So it's it, it's one of the most famous ones out there. It's like, it's so iconic that you have to show respect. So let's see what the Wolpertinger is all about. The result of a romantic coupling between a hare and a deer is not particularly threatening being a herbivore. However, its defense mechanism are that its saliva touches you, thick hair will sprout, 
and it can also emit a skunk-like mystical terrible smell that cannot be removed or covered with perfume until magically disappears seven years later. What kind of fucking, what kind of power is that? They appear as amalgamate creatures most commonly made up of rabbits, heads, squirrels' bodies, deer antlers and wings, sometimes legs, sometimes with fangs, sometimes. It's an interesting kind of, it's a cryptid that's, you know, it has like some mystical vibes to it, or it's, it feels very fantastical in that way. But the whole idea too of also it's just like queefing out some nasty smells and it won't leave for seven years is also a lot of fun too. I mean, I have to give it to Loch Ness Monster there. The Wolpertinger just doesn't do enough to, to rile me up. You know what I mean? Next up is the Mothman, another big guy and the Skunk Ape, which I'm not gonna lie, it's my favorite name so far. So the Mothman, originally sighted in Clinton, West Virginia in 1966, five men were preparing a grave in a cemetery when a brown-winged humanoid flew out of the trees. They swore that it was more than just a bird. Three days later, two young couples encountered a human-like thing about seven feet tall with large wings while driving home at night. It chased them down to Highway 62 and out of Point Pleasant city limits. Over the course of the next year, there were over 100 Mothman sightings. The strange sightings seemed to culminate in the collapse of Silver Bridge during rush hour traffic, killing 46 people. It is still the deadliest bridge disaster in United States history. Kind of interesting. Its appearance, despite the name, Mothman is not very moth-like. <laughs> Okay. He is more like a large humanoid owl, reportedly seven feet tall and can fly at speeds of over 100 miles per hour. Who clocked him in there? You know what I mean? Who the fuck clocked that in? The details of Mothman's face have not been adequately described. Sometimes he's described as not having a head with two huge red eyes set in the chest. Part of the potential reason that no one can ex uh, explain his face is that anyone who gets a close look at the Mothman seems to suffer from psychological distress that can last for months and sometimes years. I do know, yeah, I've seen this, the Mothman statue before. I wish I've always wanted to see it in person. And apparently it's a big thing that people want to have sex with the Mothman. So I'm not going to lie, Skunk Ape, you got a lot to hold up here. This is probably one of my favorite ones so far. Skunk Ape, also known as the Miyaka Ape. It's Bigfoot's Florida cousin. Started in 1818 as reports of a man-sized monkey raiding food stores and stalking fishermen. Reports vary in severity, some just reporting sightings, but others include stalking people and killing livestock. Its backstory, in the autumn of 2000, police received a letter from an anonymous woman. Included in the letter were two pictures of what she claimed was an escaped orangutan. God, that's fucking horrifying. Who had been stealing oranges from her back porch for the last few nights. That would... You couldn't even go outside. There's an orangutan out there. Later, it was found that the pictures were taken near the Miyaka River, and after the photos were released to the public, they deemed the creature the Miyaka ape. Its appearance has black fur and glowing red eyes, What's up with the glowing red eyes, too? No arms, glowing red eyes, come the fuck on. It has terrible odor, which is uh, where it's, its name comes from. Hmm, very awesome. Does it fucking compare to Mothman? I don't think so. I think Mothman takes it. The Yati Vio and the Chupacabra. Man, now we're getting... See, now I'm getting to the, it's back to backs of a lot of the ones I've, I've heard before. The Yate Vial, a carnivorous plant that eats large insects but, first, but prefers to eat humans. Ooh. Its name supposedly means I see you already. Oh, oh, that's great. I love, oh, that's so sick. Its original report was letter obtained by a New York newspaper from a botanist in Madagascar. The tree was violent and reached for natives, strangling one, of one and pulling her in with many tendrils. Oh, a short, thick trunk with spiked tentacles. The original description said it had, had a single eye to locate its prey. Oh. That's fucking rad. That's really good. Its power is as long and strong spiked tendrils, capable of grasping and overpowering humans. <sighs> that is awesome. The I see you already translation is so sick. God damn, that's good. And you know, that's I gotta go against the chupacabra. Fuck the chupacabra, dude. Stupid ass like rat dog. The chupacabra. The chupacabra is a carnivorous creature from Mexican folklore that preys on livestock and unsupervised small children. Its name literally translates to goat sucker. <laughs> that's got. Kind of, I didn't know that. The name rose to prominence in 1990s as reports of uh, of more and more brutal killings were being reported of farm animals. Some sightings have been debunked as dogs with mange. The first thing you see is his eyes, fiery red in the dark, then its sharp teeth. Depictions vary between being more dog-like or more reptilian, with the size varying between a large dog and a small bear. You know, it's it's one of the it's one of the goats, dude. Goat sucker too. I don't. I mean, honestly, I think the 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 Yad Tivo. It's just way cooler. Might be a controversial opinion because I know the Chupacabra is legendary, but I'm going to go with the Yatevo. 
This is going to be a, a difficult one. It's the Bigfoot, which is probably the most infamous cryptid of all time, and the Wendigo. This is a big one here. So Bigfoot, aka Sasquatch, great name, is the poster child for cryptozoology. And because of that, there's a dizzling amount of information about them. Bigfoot are commonly associated in the Pacific Northwest of the United States and generally are a projection of the European mythologies about wild men of the woods. Some indigenous myths state that when Bigfoot is sighted, it is a sign that man is on the wrong track and needs to change his ways. You know, we all know Bigfoot's big, hairy, eight feet tall, big ass feet and shit. Probably the most faint, one of the most famous pictures in human history is the Bigfoot walking across, which it's definitely, definitely not a guy in a suit. And it's going up against the Wendigo, which the Wendigo is also a big one too. A creature from the Alg Algonquin is that it's a malevolent spirit that possesses human beings. When possessed, their victims gain an insatiable hunger for human flesh and just a general desire to commit murder. Awesome. The first sighting of the Wendigo dates back 40,000 years ago. The earliest description of the Wendigo was that of a similar appearance to a corpse with skeleton-like thin body with gray skin, sunken eyes, bloody lips, and a long slimy tongue. Later myths say that the Wendigo is a lipless ape with giant fangs that devours human flesh. The idea too of like it, it, its powers are possession, mimicry of speech to lure victims, okay? Creates psychosis and physically adjacent humans, repulsive smell and is able to like live in ex extreme you know temperatures and also people say that when he takes a footstep the footsteps filled with blood are you fucking kidding me that's like the, what the, the flavor of the of the text is mm. bigfoot will will forever be the most popular but when they go here i think just rules just absolutely dominates and that's our first round it, this is this is where it's gonna get you know there's still some heavy hitters in here and there's still like some where i'm like eh. like our first one here round two fight one go the Wampus Cat versus the Flatwoods Monster. Hmm. The Cherokee woman who is transformed for watching her husband and, and she gets transformed into a six-legged mountain cat or the meteorite monster who fell to earth with glowing red eyes. Hmm. I'm trying to put myself in a situation of if I saw one, which one would I like, would I, would I be creeped out by more? Which here's the thing two different reasons. If I saw the Flatwoods monster, I'd be like, what the fuck is that? You know, it's crazy. Versus the Wampus Cat, even just seeing a mountain lion out in the mountains or the forest would be legitimately terrifying as well. But I do think the Wampus Cat still has a way, way more interesting backstory. And to be completely fair, there's too many cryptids with glowing red eyes. So if I if I had to be tedious about it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the Wampus Cat's still gonna win for me. The Jersey Devil or the Mongolian Death Worm. My gut immediately says Jersey Devil just because of how fucking brutal it was. I think the thing that makes it more creepy for me is that the Jersey Devil, I feel like would torture you a bit more. Versus the Mongolian Death Worm, you just touch it, you're like, oh, you just die or he just like shoots a bolt of lightning at you and you just get electrocuted and you pass out and die that way. So I feel like the, the experience with the Jersey Devil would be much more painful. It is more mystical. It's It feels like there's more lore behind it. Yeah, it feels more fantastical in that way. I mean, it's gotta go to the Jersey Devil. God, the Loch Ness Monster or the Mothman. Get the fuck out of my face, Loch Ness Monster. Mothman, un unironically, I've seen so many documentaries where it's like the Mothman. And I'm always like, oh, shut the fuck up, whatever. I'm gonna start watching some of those because the, the description of that is just too good. This might be the hardest one all night. The Yate Vo versus Wendigo. The flavor of both of these, the designs of both of these, the background, the history, so good. The Yate Vo to me, like in terms of visuals, like if I was watching a movie, I would probably want to see something with the Yate Vo more than the Wendigo. Well, that's not true, I guess. I can see how they both have like really strong merits to them. My mind goes a little more crazy with the Yate Vo. The only problem with the Yate Vo is that it's idle. It is a plant, but the idea of the translation of its name being I see you already and that the idea is that it has one big eye to like look at its victims is just so cool. God, is it really going to I feel like it's just going to come down to the fact that the Wendigo can like lurk around the woods. You have to like come to the Yatevo. But there's also something that's kind of horrifying about that, too. I, I got to go with the Wendigo. It's unfortunate. I really do want to vote for the Yate Vo, but I just know it's wrong. That might be the hardest matchup all day. We're already into round three. <laughs> I mean, besides the Wampus Cat. I mean, the Wamp I'm gonna tell you right now, the Wampus Cat is gonna be the Jersey Devil for the Wampus Cat. I'm just gonna get that done with right now. That's already, we're already done. Jersey Devil's in the finals. But now we're between the Mothman and the Wendigo. That's another hard one. The only thing that takes off points for me with the Mothman is the glowing eyes on the chest because the owl head is really cool, but the glowing red eyes on the chest just feels kind of eh. The Wendigo is just such a powerful thing. The embodiment of greed and gluttony and all that stuff is very cool. Th the thing about the brutality of the Mothman is that, to me, the brutality comes in with the very real 
superstition of the bridge and how 46 people actually died from that. And it's something that's like really happened. Obviously, was the Mothman involved? We don't know. But the idea that it's associated with that is interesting to me. I gotta go with the Mothman. Mothman it is. Man, you know, this is the finals. This is the finals I think people knew what was gonna happen, which I'm kind of happy. I'm happy that two of the biggest names out there came in. These are the finals. The Jersey Devil versus the Mothman. Now, the Jersey Devil is definitely... I think more brutal. They both, I think, are on a similar power level. If we're talking about power. Mothman can be tall. He flies super fast. The owl head is really intriguing to me. Versus the Jersey Devil is pretty goofy. Like it's a, like what the fuck they say, donkey feet with bird legs. It's such an abstract character. But at the same time, Mothman, it's not even a fucking moth. It's more of an owl. They're both kind of dumb names. Mothman, I think in, as a name, I would prefer Mothman over Jersey Devil. Versus Jersey Devil, it's just my hatred for New Jersey is no snowbound. <laughs> this is tough. This is the finals. This means everything. If I choose the wrong one, it's going to be the piss egg all over again, all right? And if people don't think I'm hurt by the piss egg thing, then you're wrong. I have been severely affected by the piss egg. But the thing about it is chicken feet meatballs would be so dry, it would be so hard to get through. Versus an egg, I feel like it would just slide down your throat. It'd be moist. You got the piss that's soaking it up. I feel like if you added anything to the chicken feet meat, that dry mess, it'd be terrible. Like imagine dipping the chicken feet meatballs in ketchup. Are you kidding me? That gave me the mental clarity I need. I have my, enough faith, and I know who my winner is. Mothman! <laughs> Mothman! Mothman! Mothman wins. I, honestly, that th this is the weirdest thing. Whenever we, we had people, or we had somebody help us with the document for this, which we'll link them down below. And a lot of this stuff, I, I've heard about a lot of these in passing, but never knew too much about it, especially Mothman. Mothman, I think, is just one of those cryptids that is just so out there. Like, there's, like, t-shirts and all kinds of stuff about it that you just, it lumps in with, like, Bigfoot, where I'm like, I get it. I know what it is. This thing has multiple ways of freaking you out, and I think that's why Mothman is the number one on my list here. What'd you think? I mean, I'm curious. I know there's going to be some discrepancies, but to me, Mothman is numero uno. You got to love him. Until next time, I will talk to you later. Enjoy your cryptid tournaments with you and your friends. Hopefully you do that as well. You won't. It doesn't matter. I don't give a shit. I'll see you next time.